Hey, look at me again. I am a sweaty mess. Oh, heck yeah. Do you know, in that last skit I did, I noticed how sweaty I am. We'll get to that. But me being a sweaty mess is what this video is going to be about today, guys. I'm hoping to reach out to some of you all, some of you all out there, and maybe bring you some help. Maybe wake you up. Maybe whisper in your ear something I wish would have been done to me seven years ago. Well, let me get three more laps in. And on my last lap, you and I are going to have a little talk. It's hard to find a spot on my shirt that's not wet with sweat to wipe off my lens. But anyway, guys, uh, I'm going to tell you what we're talking about here. It's talking about doing the walking workout. And let me lay it out for you, okay? Uh, I've been doing it now for going on seven years. Seven I gotta slow down. <laughs> it's my last lap. I usually don't slow down until I'm halfway through it, but I don't want to get done with the video. <laughs> Just, you know, you know, you know. Okay, here it goes. <sighs> I want to try to prevent the nightmare I went through uh, almost seven years ago. And we're gonna tell you about the nightmare. Then I'm gonna tell you how I'm gonna try to prevent it for you all. For starters, uh, almost seven years ago, 2014, March 7th, no, March 6th, I had a massive heart attack. My heart attack was so severe, they had to airlift me to another hospital. And on my way to the helicopter, uh, it was asked by my wife to the doctor, what is his chances? Doctor says, I'm going to be straight up with you right now. It's not good. And then the doctor grabbed my hand and says, fight it, Michael. Do your best. I had to make my goodbyes to my wife and tell them to tell my children goodbye too. That was a nightmare. Imagine. All of a sudden this came on like that. And it could be your last day on earth you have to say your goodbyes to your loved ones. Well, I died three times. I died in a helicopter on the way over and two other times to the other hospital. After four stints later, I somehow survived. Somebody up there, it being God, the Almighty, the Creator, He says it wasn't my time. But I knew things had to change. My last day in the hospital, Angie and I did some talking. And we talked about me getting out and doing the walking thing. Now, after I got out of the hospital, three days later, I had to go see the doctor. They checked my stents, make sure everything was okay. And the doctor, I asked him, I was like, what can't prevent me from this happening again? He says, I'm glad you asked that because that's what we're getting ready to talk about. Okay, we're going to walk behind the Boy Scout cabin because my car's on the other end just to get a little bit of time in. He says, well, first of all, I'm going to need to put you on a low-sodium diet. That's understandable. Do you see that bee right up there? Did it just get that in there? I hope it did. And then second of all, he says, and this was the difficult one right here. I need you to go 100% stress-free every day of the rest of your life. Okay, we're going to talk about that. Then I asked him right off the bat, I kind of butted in, I was like, what about walking? He says, that's what I was getting ready to tell you, Michael. If you could somehow get out there and walk, that is the best thing in the world for your heart. So I went home. I wasn't able, physically able to do anything for at least about seven days after I was home. And then I was like, yes. Now you got to remember when you start the walking thing, anything like that, you're going to have a lot of support. Well, I come down here where I'm at now, which I love to walk this park. I walk everywhere, by the way. And I made it 50 feet and I made a beeline to the nearest bench and I sat down and I started crying. I couldn't go no further than 50 feet. I was like, what the hell did I do to myself? Now, if I had somebody come to me and knock on my ear, tug on my ear, and say to me, before my heart attack, at least about a year or so before my heart attack, Michael, watch out what the hell you're eating and get out there and start doing the walking thing. Just because you go to work ain't enough exercise for you. But would I have listened? I wouldn't have listened back then. 
But I'm hoping some of you guys will listen. I'm hoping I can at least reach one of you. Because if I would have done what I'm doing now, it's possible I could have prevented it that night. That night that I had to say goodbye to my wife and my children. My children wasn't at the hospital though. Angie would have had to tell them my goodbyes. If I could have prevented that night, if I knew that night was coming, I would have started. Now it's not easy what I do. You know what? Let's go ahead and do another lap. One, two. All right, we're gonna walk this one real slow. We'll use this as what I call an extra cool down lap. Sometimes I do them, but it's not easy. I'm in pain a lot of times, my feet hurt, and there are some days I don't freaking feel like doing it. But I get myself up out of bed. I mean, I would say I get myself up out of bed. <laughs> but I take my ass down here and I do it. Because this is what's gonna help prevent me to say my goodbyes to my wife and my children. You bet your ass I'm doing it. Now I don't do it for the weight loss, which weight loss does happen. Uh, I do it strictly for my heart so I could be here, so I could be the father and the husband that I know I can be. He saved my ass for something. So we're gonna go, if you guys are about 45 years older and older, I'm 55, when my heart attack happened, I think I was 47 or 48. If you guys are in that age group, you know, if you got time, I'm not saying do it every day. I do it five days a week. But if you got time, get out there and put yourself about a mile in. Or 50 feet. I had to gradually to get to where I'm at today. Remember, I said I started off. Oh, it's hard to hold a selfie stick. Remember, I said I started off 50 feet. I had to gradually because after that, I kept going further and further. And something else I want to tell you too. Be your own boss. You make your decisions on how far you want to walk that day. Because if you have a trainer, you're going to do that for the trainer. I need you to do this for yourself. And as far as the support group, they don't mean it, but you will lose them. You know, they don't mean it. It happens. You are going to be your own support group. You will congratulate yourself. You will cheer yourself on. Trust me, guys, it's very doable. And I prefer to be this way. Of course, I do have a support group down here in the park right now. Yeah, there's ladies here that work in this uh, building. They watch me walk lap after lap after lap, and they support me. <laughs> and I love them for it. Now this, will this, per okay, try this again. Will this 100% prevent you from ever having a heart attack? No, but it helps. It helps, walking is damn good for the heart. And the whole purpose of this video is for me to reach out there, which I so wish somebody would have done to me, but I wouldn't have listened, and tag on your ear, say, hey, maybe you should try to do something like I'm doing. Because I don't wish that on nobody. Man or woman, child, telling your loved ones, having to tell your loved ones goodbye. And then, and I tell you, something wanted me bad. They pulled me, they killed me. I mean, I died three times. But I was given a second chance and I'm not gonna blow it. So guys, that's pretty much what this video is about. Every now and then I like to make videos like this, try to get others like you to do what I'm doing. Woo! It's a good walk today though. Oh, weather's definitely changing for the cooler. And see, that's something else too. I walk in all weather. And I want to tell you something about treadmills. I did the treadmill for the first couple of years. I didn't walk on it all the time. No, I used the treadmill on days that was just too damn cold or too damn rainy. Treadmill's good for a pinch, but it's not good for your knees. It actually killed my knees. Now here's something I need to start doing on my videos when I do my hiking and stuff is wipe the dang sweat off my face. My gosh, doing the editing and noticing how much sweat I have on me I kick myself in the butt for not like to make myself look more presentable. I am a sweater. Yes, I sweat a lot. As you can tell, look at my shirt. My gosh. <sighs> now, I'm getting ready to take that. Now, as you guys know, if you follow me, if this is your very first video watching of mine, I do uh, adventure videos. I like to go uh, fishing a lot. I've been doing more fishing now because fishing is coming to an end for the season. I do a lot of hiking. So this is the first time watching my videos. 
I just bought myself an iPhone. And I bought myself an iPhone for the video capabilities when I'm out in the field and to take a thumbnail picture. <laughs> That's what I'm getting ready to do when I get done with you guys. But guys, seriously, it looks like it's going to rain. <sighs> Please take it from me. I beg you all, you know, don't be like me. Don't wait until it's almost too late. Go out there and do what I'm doing. Because guys, for the rest of my life, I have to wear an ID bracelet. I have to go everywhere I go with nitro. And I hate it. But this is what keeps me alive a little bit longer to be with my wife and my children and my friends. And so be it. So damn be it. You know, you get used to it. It hurts. It's not easy. Anybody, everybody be doing if it was. I mean, I still do it even with a thrown back. I don't walk as many miles, but it's not easy. You're going to hurt. Your feet's going to kill you. But I'm going to tell you right now, it's going to build that heart. It's going to put muscles in your legs. It's going to shape your body. And it's also good for the thinker because it helps out with that stress that I'm supposed to be stress-free for the rest of my life. It does help out. So if I could get one of you guys to get out there and start walking, please. Please do so. Let me know down in the comments. By the way, one of the things I've noticed about my cell phone, every comment I get on YouTube comes in now. Yeah! How the hell did it pull this off? I wish I had this capability because I always have a trouble, hard time finding certain comments. And I got a confession. I'm dyslexic. Most crap I read comes in weird. But now every comment I get is coming right on my cell phone and I get to answer them one at a time. Bing, 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 bing. You know, I created a Facebook account, One Bubba Mike One, for that reason. Because I knew I'd be able to find the comments easier. But now they come in one at a time. All because of that, that iPhone. <laughs> I am loving it, guys. So when I give that full review how I feel about it in about another week or two, yeah, <laughs> it looks like it's going to be good. But guys, I'll go ahead and make some thumbnails. Go home, take a shower, and start editing. <sighs> Until next time. Come on, let's get out of here. I will see you on my next adventure. Which just wasn't an adventure, but kind of can be. And what's up with these damn bees? Don't get in my car. Just saying. We'll see you next time.